Hello, welcome to free school exam preparation. Today we're going to talk about ADXL International AS and A levels mechanics one. In this lecture, we'll start chapter five, forces and friction. So we are going to introduce how to resolve forces. So let me just give you one example. So if we have an object here, and then we have a force F. And I want to find out the component of F in the X direction and also Y direction. So how can we do this one? So the first step is we are going to use this object as our origin and establish the uh, Cartesian plane. So basically, we are going to find out the X axis and Y axis. So this object is our origin. So here will be the x direction. And this one will be the y direction. They are perpendicular with each other. OK, so that's the first step. And the second step is we are going to draw from the end of f a perpendicular line to the x axis and also a perpendicular line to the y-axis. OK, so from the origin, we point to this foot of this perpendicular line. So this we call it F1. Similarly, from the origin along this y-axis, right? so here will be F2. So F1 is a component of F in the x-direction. And F2 is a component of F in the Y direction. OK, so if we know the magnitude of F, for example, if it's 12 Newton, and this angle we know is 20 degree. So in that case, can we find out F1's magnitude? So this one will be so magnitude. So if you look at F, you can think about this as a vector here, right? So its magnitude is 12. So F1's length should be 12 times, so this is 90 degrees. So we use trigonometry knowledge here, times cosine 20 degree. Or you can think about we have a triangle, 90 degree. And the length of this triangle here is 12. And what will be the length of this triangle? And this is 20 degree. So this length will be 12 times cosine 20 degree. So that is the magnitude of F1. And how about F2's magnitude? So F2, we look at this triangle here, right? So this is 20. And then this angle should equal to 70 degree. Or we look at this small angle here, should be 20 degree because F2 and F parallel to this x-axis. So this length should be this length, which is 12, multiply sine 20 degree. Again, if we draw a triangle like this, right? This is 90 degree. This is 12 lens. Here's 20. So this lens here should be 12 times sine 20 degree. OK, so that's how we do this. Um, resolve of force in the x, y direction. Actually, you can do this in any direction, right? So for example, if we have a particle, and the particle is on a um, slope, and we know this angle is theta, and this is the weight of particle. So how do you resolve this one in a direction parallel to the surface? and also perpendicular to the surface. Again, so parallel to the surface and perpendicular to the surface, so we establish the Cartesian plane. And the particle here is our origin. OK, so if we, from this W's end, we draw a perpendicular line to this axis, right? So this one. And we draw another perpendicular line to this axis, so from the origin to the foot here. So this will be W1, W2. So W1 will be the component of W along this surface direction. And W2 will be this W's um, component perpendicular to this surface. OK, so if we make this slightly longer, 
So we know this angle is theta, and here is 90 degree because W is vertically downward. So this angle should be 90 minus theta, right? So maybe we call it alpha. So alpha equals to 90 minus theta because we look at this big triangle. So this blue angle here, we call it beta. So alpha plus beta equals to 90 degree. So beta should equal to theta. So if you look at this triangle here, right? So we know W2's magnitude equals to W's magnitude. Usually we just write W as a magnitude, and W2 here is as magnitude, times cosine beta, right? And in this triangle here, because this is beta, so here is also beta. So we'll have W1 equals to W, which is this magnitude, times sine beta. Okay, so we can take a look at one example. So this is um, on page, give me one second. So it's on page 88, question one. Eighty-eight question one. Okay, so we want to write the force in this form, Pi plus Qj in the xy um, directions. Okay, so the first one, A, here is x, and then this is y, right? And then we have this force here, which is 12 newton. And here is 20 degree. Actually, I have done this question. So from this end point, we draw a perpendicular line to x-axis and draw a perpendicular line to y-axis, right? So this length here, this will be 12 times cosine 20 degree. And for this one here, will be 12 times sine 20 degree. Because this one, x-axis is in i's direction, so it will be 12 cosine 20 times i. And this is in y's direction, so plus 12 sine 20 times j. So that's how we do question A. So question B here, actually we have x-axis, y-axis, right? And then we have a force downward 5 newton. Okay, because it does not have x component, so we can write this as 5, which is a magnitude, times its direction, and it's in negative j's direction. So it will be negative 5j. Okay, let's take a look at d here. So we have x, y, and then 50 degree, 6 newton. Okay, so from here, we draw a perpendicular line to y-axis and to x-axis. From the origin to this foot here, and from the origin to this foot. So this length here will be 6 times cosine 50 degree, right? And this length will be 6 times, this is 50, so here is also 50, times sine 50 degree. So the x component should be 6 cosine 50 but it's to the left, so we have negative um, i. And this one's downward, so it's against j's direction, so we have negative 6 times sine 50 degree. Okay, so that's for question 1. Now let's take a look at question 2. So it's on page 89, question 2. Okay, so we want to find out the component in the x direction and y direction. Okay, let's take a look at A. So this is x, this is y. Okay, and then we have a force here, 6 newton. And we have another force here, 8 newton. Okay, so now we are trying to find out the resultant force in x direction and y direction. Because this 6 newtons force is already in x direction, so we don't worry about that, right? But for this one here, so we can resolve, actually we've talked about this, so we can just directly draw the graph. So here should be 60 degree. And this one we call it maybe F1, and this is F2. Okay, so F1, this force, is its magnitude is 8 times cosine 60 degree, right? F2, its magnitude is 8 times sine 60 degree. Okay, so we can write this force F here 
as 8 cosine 60, and it's in the positive x direction, so i, plus 8 times sine 60 degree, and here is j, right? And for this force, maybe we call it n. Um, let's change the name r, right? So r is in the negative x direction, so it will be negative 6 i. Okay, so the resultant force, resultant force of these two, we can just directly do the vector sum. So it will be 8 cosine 60 minus 6, and it's in i's direction, plus 8 sine 60, and in j's direction. Okay, we can try another question. So this is question C here. So we have this is x, and this is y. So we have P, Newton, and here we have N, Newton. And then we have R, Newton. And this is alpha, and here is beta. Okay, so first we can write this, uh, this is Q, Newton, sorry. We can write this force Q here, right? So its magnitude is Q. Maybe we call this F1, this F2, F3. Okay, so it's just Q multiply I, right? So this will be F1. And for F2, we can resolve. So basically, it can be this direction and this direction. Okay, so for this component, it's F2, it's P multiply uh, cosine alpha, so F2 will be P multiplied cosine alpha, it's in I's direction. And this one will be P times sine alpha in J's direction. Okay, similarly, we can do this one here. Right, so we'll have F3 equals to, so this component, so this is better, this is also better, right? So will be uh, R times sine beta, but it's in the negative i direction. And for this one here, it's in the negative j direction, and its magnitude will be uh, R times cosine beta. So the resultant force will be, so we just add everything up here. So for i's component, it will be Q plus P cosine alpha minus R sine beta, right? And for J's component will be P sine alpha minus R cosine beta. Okay, so that's how we do this question two. And now let's take a look at question uh, four. I'm oh, sorry, question three. So it's on page 186, question three. So we are going to do question 3b. So here we have two forces, and this one is 15 Newton, and this angle is 60 degree. And here we have 20 Newton, right? And this angle is 15 degree. And we want to find out the resultant force. So for the resultant force, we can think about these two are adding up together. But be careful here. These two are vectors. So how do we add up two vectors? So if we have one vector here, V1, and we have another vector, V2, how do you find out the sum? Okay, so what we need to do is just use V1 and V2 as a side. We draw a parallelogram, right? So this is a parallelogram. And then from this point, we link to this one here. So this will be the resultant force. And um, for this graph, what we can do here is from this end, we draw a line parallel to this 20 Newton's direction, right? And then from here end, we draw parallel to the 15 Newton's direction. Sorry, this graph might not be good. So here we have this is a resultant force. Okay, so. That's how we draw this, right? But how do we find out its magnitude and also its direction? Okay, let's think about this. So if we have one 60 Newton here, this is, uh, sorry, 60 degree here, this is 15. We, we think about this magnitude, just its length. And then we have this is 20. And then we draw the oops, parallel line. 
right? So um, parallel. It's a bit hard to draw. Let's try to do this, right? And then we parallel line. And this resultant force is here. Okay, so this is 60. This one is 15. So that means this angle, we put A, B, C, D. So this angle B, A, D is 75, right? So angle B, this one should be, so it's A, B, C. So this should be 180 minus 75, which is 105 degrees. Okay, and then we know this is 15, here is 20. So if you think about this triangle ABC, what will be the length of AC? So AC's length, we can use the cosine formula, right? So it will be AB's length squared plus BC's length squared minus um, 2 times, uh, sorry, minus A, give me one second, minus 2 times AB times BC and times cosine angle ABC and then square root. Okay, so we can just plug in the value. AB we know is 15 and BC we know is 20, right? And minus 2 times 15 times 20 and times cosine 105 degree. So we know AC. So what is AC? AC is just the magnitude of the resultant force. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the direction, right? So how do we find out the direction? Okay, so here, actually, if you look at this graph, we know this is kind of like a, a x, x, uh, axis, right? So we know this direction is 60 degree. So if we can find out this small angle alpha here, so we know this resultant force is in direction of uh, 60 minus alpha, right, to this x, uh, positive x direction. Okay, so now the key problem is to find out this alpha. So how do we find out alpha? Again, if we look at the triangle A, B, C. So we'll have 20, which let's write this. BC over sine alpha equals to AC over sine angle ABC. Okay, we know BC, right? BC is 20, but we don't know sine alpha. We know AC from this one, right? So we have this AC value, and sine ABC is sine 105 degree. So we can calculate sine alpha. So once you have sine alpha, you will be able to find out alpha. And once you find out alpha, you will be able to find out this angle that AC or the resultant force makes with the positive x axis. Okay, so that's the idea um, how we do this question. Now let's take a look at question 6. So it's still on page 89. Give me one second. Question 6. So we have a force P is applied to a box of mass 10 kg. So the box starts to accelerate at 2 meter per second square along a smooth horizontal plane. And we know the force causes uh, um, acceleration is applied at 45 degrees to the plane. Work out P. Okay, so let's draw the diagram here. So we have a smooth surface, so that means no friction. And we have a box, right? And then we know it has weight, W equals to mg. M is 10, so it's 10G, Newton. And also we have the normal reaction force, R. We don't know what's the size. And also we have a force P, and causing the box to accelerate. So it's 45 degree to the plane. Okay, so where should be this force? So think about there are two situations, right? Because it does not specify. Um, okay, so the first situation is P is like this. And this angle is 45 degree. Okay, so the second situation is this is a box and we have W. We have this is R, right? But this time this P is downward 
and it's still 45 degree. Okay, so let's take a look at the first case. So this P we resolve in two directions, right? So one is along the surface, horizontal direction. The other one is perpendicular to the surface, vertical direction. And this is P1, this is P2. So we'll have P1's magnitude equals to P times cosine 45 degree. Okay, actually, if the box accelerates, the box is moving along the surface. So we only care about the resultant force along the surface. So because this P1 component is the only force along the surface, so that will be the resultant force along the surface. Okay, so this one equals to M times A, right? So we'll have this A, I'm uh, sorry, this P equals to M, which is 10 kilogram times acceleration A over cosine 45. So this will be 20 square root of 2 Newton. So that's the first case. Now let's look at the second case. Still, we resolve this P into P1 and P2. Again, so parallel to the surface, there is only one force, which is a component of P, we call it P1. So we'll have this P1 equals to MA. Again, P1 equals to P times cosine 45 degree. So we'll have this P equals to MA, which is 20 over 1 over square root of 2. So it's 20 square root of 2 Newton. So no matter which direction this P is, right, even it's up or it's down, so we have the same result. Okay, so that's for question 6. Now let's take a look at question 8. So this is on page 90. So we have a parachute and its mass is 80 kilogram. And this parachute is attached to uh, sorry, is attached to a parachute by two lines, each with tension T, a parachutist. So this is a person, right? And then is attached to a parachute by two lines. So you can think about we have a parachute, right? There are two lines, and this person is hanging up here. Okay, so the parachutist is falling with constant velocity. Okay, so here we have this is W of the parachutist, and this is T, and this is T. And the velocity is um, constant. And experience a resistance to motion due to air resistance. So we have air resistance F because it's falling down. So this should be pointing up, F, right? And F equals to uh, one quarter of her weight. So F equals to one over four W Newton. And shows the tension of T is 20 square root of three G Newton. So we want to show this is true. Okay, so how do we do this? Uh, and additionally, we have here 60 degree, 60 degree. So we resolve the forces in two directions. One is horizontal, and the second is perpendicular, right? Uh, sorry, it's vertical, right? Okay, so this F and W, we don't need to resolve them, but for this T, so this one can be T1, and here will be T2. And this one will have T3, and then T4. Okay, so if we look at this T here, so we have T1 equals to T times cosine 60 degree. And T2, which is pointing up, equals to T times sine 60 degree. Okay, this time maybe we change a way of writing this up. So we call this X axis and Y axis as a parachutist is the origin. So in this case, we can write T as um, T1, which is uh, T1i, right? And plus, uh, let's do this one, sorry. T equals to um, T1. Okay, so still, I think it's a little bit complicated. Let's just write like this. So T1 goes to T cosine 60, T2 goes to T sine 60. So here, T1, T, T2, they are magnitude of the force, right? Okay, and then we'll have T3 equals to T times cosine 60, and T4 equals to T times sine 60. 
Okay, so horizontally, the um, resultant force will be T1 minus T2, right? It's, uh, sorry, T1 minus T3. Because T1 is to the right, T3 is to the left, it should be zero because this parachute is, is not moving horizontally. Okay, so T1 equals to T cosine 60 and minus T3, T cosine 60, which is correct. Okay, and vertically, so because it's moving in a constant velocity, so that means the resultant force vertically is zero. So we have W equals to, because W is downward, right? Equals to upward direction, which is F plus T2 plus T4. Okay, so W is 80 G, right? F is one quarter of W, which is 20 G. And T2 is T sine 60. T4 is also T sine 60. So we have this equation. So that means T equals to 60 G over 2 sine 60. So it will be 60 G over square root of 3. So it will be 20 square root of 3 G Newton. So we have proved this result. Okay, so that's how we do this question. Now let's take a look at the challenge question, and it's on page 90. Page 90, challenge. Oh, sorry, page 90, challenge. So we have two forces act upon a particle. So let me just draw this one here. So this is x, this is y, right? And we have f1 and f2. And here is 45 degree. And this one is 60 degree. Okay, so the resultant force is 3i plus 5j newton. And we want to find out the magnitude of F1 and F2. Okay, so we just use F1, F2 to denote the magnitude, right? So we resolve this direction, this direction. And here we resolve to this direction and this direction. Okay, so in the x-axis direction, so we have F1 times cosine 45 degree, right? And then minus F2, because it's 60, so here is 60, times sine 60 degree, and this is I. Why I put minus here? Because it's F2 sine 60, this component is pointing to the negative x-axis direction, right? So I use negative, but this component is a positive x-axis direction. Okay, and then we have this y-axis direction. So we have F1 times sine 45 degree and plus F2 times cosine 60 degree and pointing up. Okay, so this one we know it's 3i plus 5j. So from here, we have F1 cosine 45, which is square root of 2, and F2, which is 2 square root of 3, equals to 3. And here we'll have square root of 2, F1, plus cosine 60, so 2, F2, equals to 5. Okay, so we use equation 2 to minus 1, so 2 to minus 1, so we have F2, Multiply 1 over 2 plus square root of 3 over 2 equals to 2. So F2 should equal to 4 square root of 3 plus 1, which is, um, so here will be 2, 4 square root of 3 minus 1, right? So 2 times square root of 3 minus 1 Newton. So once you find F2, you can just plug in here, and we will be able to find out the magnitude of F1. Or what you can do is you can multiply square root of 3, square root of 3, and plus, right? So we have 1 over, uh, let's do this way. So uh, 1 over square root of 2 plus square root of 3 over square root of 2, F1, equals to 3 plus 5 square root of 3. So we are able to find out um, F1. Right? Okay, so that's how we do this challenge question. So that's everything for this lecture. We hope you have enjoyed it and wish you good luck with your exam.